Isn't it marvelous when two of your favorite things come together? We know how much I love the SunSync products and I've installed them in my own plant room that also contains a toilet and basin. But here at Farmhouse Calf, which Rick is already rushed in there to get our order underway, is actually off grid. So in other words, it has no mains electrical connection because it would be too expensive in this remote location to get a mains cable to it. So what they've done, they've decided to go down the solar route and use the SunSync LifeLink to store that energy that they're not using at any time within the CAF, meaning that they are completely off grid for our electrical supply. We know also some of the stuff's going to be using gas in order to cooking process. We can't expect such a small CAF to actually do everything electrically. But before we uh, get any further, I think, uh, Better check to see what Rick's up to because no doubt he's tucking into a wonderful fried breakfast. Better get this finished so we can take a look at the SunSync LifeLink review. So off-grid, normally when I see those off-grid videos on YouTube, you're seeing complex inverter setups, massive banks of lead acid batteries that I'm sure you remember from your day. What's different about the LifeLink? Okay, looking at the LifeLink here, you're actually looking at both the solar inverter and a battery all in one lovely compact unit. Right, now that is a pretty neat unit and I can actually think of lots of applications for that because it just blends in seamlessly. And I'm thinking I've seen your installation in your plant room at home. There's a lot of additional equipment in there, isn't it, that takes up space and it might not look quite as aesthetically pleasing as it could do. No, and that's where I've got the advantage of having that one room that is dedicated to my solar and battery system, but we're not always in that position. Think of those new builds maybe where they're just smuggling in one little unit. This would sit nicely in any room within a house because it, it sort of reminds me of a, a storage heater from back in the day as well. And we weren't offended by those in rooms, were we? No, no, it is. It is. It would blend in seamlessly almost anywhere. But before we go to houses, let's think of some of those off-grid applications. Right. What have we got a lot of around here? Well, when I'm walking alongside that canal and I'm looking at those narrowboats, which you call narrowboats, I call them barges, many of those have got their own little solar around the top and I think a lifelink would sit nicely within those. All right, okay, I call them narrowboats because there's also a pub called the Narrowboat as well. Top tip if you're ever visiting Skipton. Fantastic range of craft beers in there. Uh, but yeah, so that is a great application because a lot of those people are either relying on a plug-in hookup point at night, yeah. sometimes you can't find, or running a little diesel generator at the side of the boat or keeping the engine going and obviously that creates noise, worry about fumes and things like that. Yeah, yeah that would be a nice little solution. Not a lot of room in a narrow boat. No. Fit right in. Also I'm thinking, you know, remote buildings. Imagine the situation, you've got a huge garden, you want to put a possibly a, a little bar down at the bottom or a, an area for a barbecue or something like that. You want some power for your, for your Sonos speakers so you can annoy the neighbours. Obviously digging up the garden, running a big cable back, all that, quite expensive. You could just drop a few panels on your, on your roof, price of solar panels has fallen all the time put one of these in and you're good to go. Yeah, and I'd just like to do the price there with you. Yeah, that is a cheap solution because, believe it or not, the one that's in front of us here was the same price as my brand new iPhone. So that just puts it into context how little it would cost to do that as a solution in that bar or garden area. Right, does it come with an app? <laughs> right, it does come with an app, but I think we'll uh, we'll cover that in a different video with that okay. one. Okay, so you can't install apps and play games on it, but it does give you uh, power so I'm thinking you know, remote buildings and then other, sometimes you need to run remote kit away from the building and getting a power supply to it. So I'm thinking again, that large garden of yours, Gary, with a rolling gravel driveway to power those electric gates and things like that. Yeah, it's probably taking it to a different level, but I like the way your mindset goes that. But again, could you comment below in a more logical situation maybe than that uh, aspiring driveway that maybe you've got on your property? Okay, and I'll throw one out there to the contractors out there. Think of another potential. Put one of these in the back of your van yeah, and you've got probably enough power right. to run, you know, the Makita kettle or charge the batteries for the Makita kettle, your power tools or possibly some essential power for the customers during that rewire, you know, when they obviously need to keep the uh, internet router on. I'm glad you gave me a few moments there because my mind initially went, I'm laying this in the back of the van, I'm going to lift it out every night with my tools in order to charge it. I think you've got in your mind a scenario where maybe the lead goes into the property and we charge that fixed in the back of the van. That's a very good solution. Yeah, just again, you know, like you would even think of motorhomes as well, isn't it? Yeah. And things like that. So I know Joe Robinson's a big caravaner, might be a little bit too heavy to put in the back of his caravan, but if you had a motorhome, something like that could drop in. So circling then back to properties. Now we've seen a lot of properties where the limit and factor in solar power is obviously the amount of roof space you have. Yes. And in smaller properties, let's just say some of the developers out there doing a little bit of greenwashing and might just throw 
a few panels on the roof and that's what we saw at our smart home takeover in Harrogate. Yeah, we did just six panels on that roof, almost as if it was obliged to put solar in. Okay, and then a very small inverter, obviously, in that loft space. Are you thinking that it could be easily replaced? Yeah, so that was a 1.6 kilowatt inverter. You know, enough when it's nice and sunny to, to sort of, you know, put a little bit of the hot water, keep the base load of the house running. But adding storage allows you to obviously avoid exporting to the grid. So even with a small solar panel array, upgrading that existing inverter, dropping one of these in, you get a little bit of battery storage, you know, probably enough to run that base load. And then, but you, yeah, I think I think that could be good. Yeah, just simple drop-in solution. Yeah, I like that. But again, because obviously it's so economically priced, that would be a quick solution. But what we could find then is maybe they've realised a little bit more storage would be greatly beneficial to the actual customer in that smart home takeover. Is it easy to add to additional batteries? Yeah. So there's so there's two options. So either you can parallel multiple units of the complete combination, so the inverter and battery. Yes. So imagine you had, say, like a, a complex roof geometry where you wanted, you know, multiple strings. Right. You could have one of these on each strings and then share the battery capacity between them. Oh, so okay. if you had, yeah. you know, if you had four of these in, you'd end up with, you know, eight kilowatts of storage. Okay. Uh, or if you couldn't add more solar because you're limited on the roof space, but wanted just more battery capacity because you want to buy in some of that cheap, uh, cheap variable tariff energy that's floating around sometimes, you can add traditional uh, SunSync batteries to this with the additional battery terminals and the output of the, the BMS on the bottom there as well. So you can communicate with those batteries. And that's adding about five kilowatts or slightly over to whatever the battery is in the setup that you've got within the LifeLink, isn't it? Yeah, but again, keeping it, you know, you could, you, if you didn't have space, you could distribute these around a little bit like storage heaters. Oh. Or if you have got more room or possibly put this in the garage, you could have you, your batteries and this yeah. in, in one location. It's got you completely covered. Shall we go electrically through what we've got now? Because there doesn't seem to be many things around it. So what's it got built in? Okay, so dead easy when it comes to electrical. We've got our obviously incoming mains isolator okay. there that we need. Obviously, if we're on grid, you'd have that. All of the terminals and connections at the bottom and they're all plug and socket. So I wire a plug and socket combination for my income and main supply. Yeah. I've then got a load terminal. So the load terminal is there for either if you're using it as a sort of a UPS, you want to keep essential loads on uh, in the case of a power cut. Or if you're off grid, that's where you'd connect your, your, your loads to that you want the power from the battery. Yeah. We've pulled it out here to this RCD socket, which we've got here. Now, there's quite a bit of complications when it comes to uh, obviously the electrical requirements when it comes to uh, running stuff on the UPS side uh, and it normally comes down to something called the earth bond relay which is built in luckily on this one okay yeah, yeah. but we're not going to go there in this video in terms of the electrical side of that because Joe Hammond okay. has produced a fantastic CPD depending on when you're watching it will whether it will be public uh, or across on eFix Trainer Central, where you can learn all about the essential electrical installation requirements when you look at things like island mode. Is what we do it. Okay, we'll leave you there. It's just got instantly complicated for me, but it hasn't. We've also got the Wi Fi dongle, so we've got no hardwired internet connection to get here. I've also got a connection if we're obviously got the CT if we're actually on grid. Yeah. And around my side, very controversial. We've made some videos on this and we'll leave them in the link in the description. Okay, for this one, we've got a DC isolator here for the PV strings built into the actual inverter itself. So no uh, remote isolator required. Please mm -hmm. check out that video. And also a switch here for the battery and the fuse is built in within the actual unit. That saves you loads of stuff on the wall, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Really keep wiring very simple and obviously provides all the essential safety requirements. And then a few additional connections uh, underneath as well, we've got our string connections. So this is the smallest one in the range. So this is the 2.5 kilowatt uh, inverter that supports a single string as we step up through the range to the 3.6 and the 5.5 kilowatt uh, inverter ratings, you get an additional set of strings, but we will leave a link in the description uh, for the full uh, LifeLink range. I think he's got it all covered, hasn't it? Absolutely wonderful product here. Not only very visually appealing, but got loads of applications, including the ones hopefully that have been left in the actual comments below. Yeah, I mean, if you've got one of these installed, fire in some questions for it, because I think we're going to be living with this for a while. And I think we're going to take it out uh, for a full install. Uh, obviously, there's lots of things you can set up on the screen there and obviously monitor via the app all the things you'd expect to do to be able to interrogate how much power you're generating and things to do with setup of uh, in terms of how you're using the battery. 
And if you want to see how I got on when Gary went green, this is on our other YouTube channel. Check out the video on screen here and you'll see a series of videos where I took my solar journey really seriously. I think you made a lot of mistakes, Gary. <laughs>